Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm yours truly, Pastor Eloise Hines, and it is a privilege for me to be in your presence another time. This is a good day to be saved, born again, blood washed, and in the land of the living. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We want to get into the word of God today. And of course, we started last time. If you've been following with us, as I know that you have been doing talking to you about the three kinds of man yes three kinds of man come on ladies don't get too excited we're going to get into the program in a little bit but just let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for your word the entrance of your word it gives light it gives understanding to the simple and we pray indeed that this word will reach to the hearts of those who need to receive it we will be challenged we'll be transformed in jesus name amen Amen. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, to right down to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4, thereabout. And we're going to be looking at the three kinds of man that Paul writes to the church at Corinth, speaking to them about. Last time we started talking about the natural man. In fact, the three kinds are natural, carnal, and spiritual. And when we get into the word of God, you'll be able to determine which of these categories you fall into. Mind you, when I say man, that's why I didn't use the word men. I'm talking about persons. Amen. I'm talking about characteristics of how we operate in the realm of the earth. So I'm talking about three kinds of man. There are three distinctions. The natural man, the first one that Paul talks about, does not understand spiritual things. He says to the natural man, spiritual things are seen as foolishness. They're weird. Amen. And if it is, you know, the persons who fall into that category really don't have much for the deep things of God. Interestingly, the natural man can appreciate those good moral values that the Bible teach. Yes, he can appreciate or she can appreciate the thing about loving others. They can appreciate those simple things as not stealing, amen, or doing unto others maybe as you want them to do. Those basic principles they can understand. But the deeper things of God, Paul even spoke about preaching about the cross of Jesus Christ as being foolishness to some people. The natural man, if I can get into the word, it says one version says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse um, 14, it says he is the man without the spirit. He is the man who is not spiritual. He is the unbeliever. He or she, the, the, the natural person is an unbeliever. It means it is the person in his or her uh, natural state of operating. And if we know anything about man, we would know that the natural state of man operating in the realm of the earth is a very sinful state. In fact, Paul writing in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, he says that by one man, sin entered the world and death by sin, death passed on all men. For all men have sinned being Adam. This is our natural state, a very sinful state that we inherited from Adam because he sinned. Amen. David says, I was born in sin and I was shapen in iniquity. Come on, look at what's happening in our world today. And you must understand, you know, people are talking about all the, what the police is doing and crime in our land. I'm saying to you, once you have natural men who operate on the basic principle of if I feel like it, I will do it. Uh, if you do me, I will do your back and just operate according to their senses. If I see you have a gold chain and I want it, I will take it. If we have people in the world operating on these basic sinful nature, these basic principles, we are not going to be able to solve the issue of crime. I'm saying that. Amen. Because people are just going to be operating without anything spiritual guiding them. They're operating in the realm of the natural according to what they could see, they could touch, they can taste, they could smell, they can hear. 
Hallelujah. There are people who just believe, well, when I die, I'm done. So let me just live life how I want to live life. It have no God. It have no judgment. It have no resurrection of the dead. They are natural people. And sometimes these very natural people can occupy positions in high society. And unfortunately, sometimes these natural people comment on spiritual things that they do not understand. And some people gravitate to what they have to say. And some natural people will simply say there is no God because they do not understand what they cannot see. Hallelujah. One person said that they took a plane and they, 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 they traveled and they flew as much as they could go out of space. And because they did not find God, they have concluded that God does not exist because he cannot be seen with the natural eye. That is how the natural man operates. In fact, one person says the natural man has not experienced the new birth. And he lives in a world limited by his five senses. He, he has not experienced the new birth that Jesus spoke about in John chapter 3 verse 1 with Nicodemus. When Nicodemus came to him asking about all the things that he was doing. And Jesus had to point out to Nicodemus that you, know, you, 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 you had such a high position in society as a Jew. Yes, as a Pharisee, and yet he did not understand spiritual things that Jesus was sharing to him. Jesus said to him, you have to be born again because what is born of the flesh is flesh, operates as flesh, connects with flesh. But he says, what is born of the spirit is spirit, understands spiritual things and even understands flesh things too. But the natural man cannot. Amen. It's like trying to explain to an ant how to fly a plane. There's no way the ant could understand that. No matter how you try to reason. <laughs> two different spheres of operating. Two different perspectives. Two different worldviews. Two different paradigms. Two different mode of operating in the same space. In the same realm. Hallelujah. The natural man does not have the spirit in dwelling. So depends, he or she depends on what comes naturally. Amen. One under the influence of his own sensual and animal nature. And is not a term that you would hear applied to Christians at all. So the natural man is influenced by the senses. And what is his basic nature? You know, when you look at a dove, often people associate the nature of a dove as peace. Amen. When you talk about a lion, people associate the lion with fierceness, aggressiveness. The nature of the natural man, hallelujah, is sin. And he's prone to sin. And Paul says he does not understand the things of God. What God wants to do is to change that natural man into a spiritual man. But man has to come to a place of acknowledging Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and allowing the Spirit of God to make him anew. Allowing the Spirit of God to cause him to experience a new birth in Christ Jesus so that he can be translated from that path of spiritual darkness into a path of enlightened men. Otherwise, the natural man cannot relate to spiritual things. He does not have the spirit. He cannot appreciate the teachings that are spiritual. And of course, if he continues in that state, he will be eternally separated from God when that time comes. That's the natural man. So then we also have the carnal man. And that's what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians from verse chapter 3, from verse 1, there are about. And I want to point out some things that Paul says about the carnal man. Amen. The first thing Paul says about the carnal man is that he is a brother. <laughs> Amen. He is part of the body. The first thing my Bible says in that verse is brothers. The natural man, unlike the, the carnal man, unlike the natural man, is born again. Amen. The, the carnal man is a believer. 
The carnal man has experienced the new birth. The carnal man has, prof has professed, sorry, Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. The carnal man sits with you and is part of your church fellowship group. They may sing in the choir. The carnal man may even be an usher. The carnal man is a bread ring, is a brother, or as one person says, is a part of the family of God. The carnal man, amen, is there with you when you go to church, amen, when you sit in the pews. My God, and as I say that, I remember somebody, as I went to a particular church, visited, and that person sat in a seat in front of me and was really fussing and fussing about things that were being said. I mean, the thing turned me off so much that if I go back to that, that, that church, I would not want to sit next to that person. That's a carnal man. They are there in the service. Sometimes they sit right next to you and when the word is coming forth, they would make comments and they would snicker and they would distract and, and they have their own reasons for being there, but they have professed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and consider themselves saved, blood washed, born again. They may even speak in tongues as was the case in the Corinthian church. Hallelujah. They may have the giftings operating in them and through them. They may even be mighty in the pulpits and, and mighty in what they do in ministry, but they can still be carnal. They are part of the body of Christ. And maybe that's the reason we see some of the isms and schisms and some of the challenges we face. Because it's not that people not a child of God, they are carnal. Hear what Paul says, they are brothers. Amen. The next thing Paul says, he says, I could not address you as spiritual, but worldly, mere infants or babes in Christ. Secondly, they are, they are spiritual babies. Anybody who knows about an infant, one time, if, if, if you think about an infant, how an infant behaves, you one time you're thinking that that infant is somebody who has to be cared for, has to be looked after, <laughs> hallelujah, have to be um, consistently monitored so that they don't put things in their mouth. They cannot be left alone unattended for long hours. And it's somebody that needs consistent supervision because they're crying, they're, they're neighing, they're hungry, they make, they fussing about stuff. Paul looked at the Corinthian church with all its giftings of tongues and prophecy and still called them babies when it comes to spiritual things. God forbid if we still have spiritual babies in our assemblies, it's going to make the work so much harder. Amen. So he says, I wanted to address you as such, but they are babies and you're going to talk baby, talk to babies. Hallelujah. He said, listen to me, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ, mere babes in Christ. You have to address, hallelujah, the carnal man as a baby. You have to talk to him in baby language. Come on. You have to relate to him in baby terms. And one of the ways we talk to babies, even in the natural, is that we, we, we go through sometimes, you know, oh, chuku chuku, and we don't get into heavy conversations and philosophical ideas with babies. So Paul had to address them as spiritual babies. Though they were born again of the Spirit of God, they were immature to the course of spiritual things. Though they may not have been fully controlled by their sensual nature, they were far from being perfect in their faith and in their, in their walk of holiness and maturity in the things of God. So Paul addressed them fitting to their conduct and spiritual maturity, which Paul says, you are a baby. I have to talk to you in baby language. I can't give you nothing too heavy. I got to deal with the, with the simple things. That's how I have to address you. Amen. And that, that word worldly, when he says I have to address you as worldly or fleshy or just those who, um, you know, are believers, but they remain 
under the whole influence of their corrupt nature. So when you look at them, though they say Jesus, their lives do not fully manifest the characteristics of who Jesus is because the old nature is still having some pull, some tugs, hallelujah. The old way of doing things is still influencing their thinking and influencing their conduct, my God. That's why Paul says you got to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm saying to you, when you come to Christ, there has to be a renewing of the mind. The things I used to do, I don't do them no more. The places I used to go, he says, I'm not going there anymore. The ways I used to think and process, I don't do that anymore the way I used to reason. First Corinthians 13, 11, Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. Come on. But when he says, I became a man, I put away childish thinking, childish reasoning, childish acting. He could not address them as spiritual. Who is what? We were supposed, they were supposed to be, and we are supposed to be operating according to our thoughts, our opinion, our pre, our precepts directed by the Holy Spirit working in us. Come on, having our attitudes and all of that influenced by the Holy Spirit who is now alive and dwelling in us. Believers who are supposed to have made some spiritual progress in our walk with God and have attained a certain level of maturity to the spiritual side of things. Paul says, I really want to address you as spiritual, but I can't do that as yet. You see, when we are born again, all of us are new babes. First Peter 2 and 2, he says, as newborn babes in Christ, he says, you got to desire the sincere milk of the word. He says that you can do what? You can grow. You can grow. You need to grow. Profession of faith in Christ is not the end. It is just the beginning of the journey. You must grow by desiring the sincere milk of the word. So it means if you're not reading the word, if you don't know what the word has to say, you're not getting your mind renewed. You're not having the mind of Christ. You don't understand how things are supposed to be done in the kingdom of God you're going to remain a spiritual baby and I'm saying this has nothing to do with the length of time you are saved come on you, that is the problem Paul was having because the length of time they were saved Paul is saying by now you should have put away baby things the length of time some of us are saved we're still operating as babies it's all about me, myself and I even in the midst of the congregation is what I want Amen. It's what suits me. You know, little children, when you try to take away something they have, even if it's not theirs, you will hear them say, mine, <laughs> in mine. And they will throw a tantrum sometimes according to the age and they will kick a fuss because it's mine. It's all about me. It's what I want. Paul says, by now you should have put away baby stuff. And I need to address you like that. So it says, first of all, the carnal man is a brother. So he's somebody who belongs to the body of Christ. He's not as the natural man who is an unsaved person. He, the carnal man is a believer, but he is immature spiritually. Paul says, I need to address him. So he has to talk, baby, talk to him. He has to give him the simple thing. The elementary principles of the faith is all Paul could give him. In fact, one person says, teaching spiritual truths is dependent on the receptiveness of those who are being taught as their own spiritual depravity was the real hindrance to his teaching them the higher spiritual truth. There comes a point in time, people of God, where you start off as a new baby in Christ and you understand the basics. I was there about baptism, about you know, laying on of hands, Hebrews 5 from verse 14 thereabout tells you about that 
But there comes a time when you've got to get into deeper stuff. The stuff that God wants to download to us as we mature spiritually. And Paul was at that place. But Paul says, I, I really cannot give these things to you as yet. Because you are not ready. I wonder if God is looking at us and saying there are some things he wants to download. There are some secret stuff. There are some divine revelations he wants to give us. But because of our immaturity, he cannot give it to us as yet. I wonder if our own immaturity is hindering the deep deposits of God in our lives. We may be praying for it. Come on, many of us have just come off of our prayer and fasting and believe in God to turn situations around. And God is waiting to download some stuff in us so that we could be the agents of change in our nations. But guess what? We are immature and God cannot download that to us because we would not be able to take it. That's what Paul confronted with the, with the believers in Corinth. He says, listen, besides talking to you and baby talk, Paul said, I to give milk, I to give baby food. The time for me really should be to give you meat. That's what Paul says. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 2, he says, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. That's what Paul is saying. I had to give you that. When we turn to Hebrews and look at what, what the writer there is saying in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. He says, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because he says you are slow of learn, slow to learn of the mysteries of Christ. In fact, though by this time, and I want to pause there a little bit because there is a time to be a baby, but there's a time to grow up. Hey, if your 10 year old is still being breastfed, if your 10 year old, come on, is still in pampas, if your 10 year old cannot tie his lacing for himself, if your 10 year old still drinking milk, oh, you would say to the doctor that something is wrong. My God. Ah, how many 10 year old and 15 year old babies do we have in the body of Christ still? says look at it by now he says time amen the time should have brought about a certain amount of maturity amen he says look at this you ought to be teachers by this time you should have matured to the point where you can be the one now imparting wisdom and spiritual truth to others he says you are at the point where we still need to take time to teach you you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. Back to it. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone, he says, who lives on milk, being still a baby or an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, hallelujah, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. God wants to give us solid food, but we keep operating like babies. And therefore, all that he can give us is just the basic stuff. That's our five minutes. It's a sermon you could take. Ah, the Lord loves you. The Lord will bless you, will keep you, and you good with that. When God wants to download some deeper mysteries about his profound design that he has for this world, and we need it. Especially in a time like this, when our nation is looking for strategies for crime and strategies for the economy and strategies for the youth and strategies for marriage. The church needs to be that answer. And God, I believe, has the answer for us. So Paul said, I have to give you a baby food. And then you look at the, the carnal man. So not only is he in the body, he's a baby. Paul says, look at his behavior. In verse 3 of that same 1 Corinthians 3, Paul says... You are worldly. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worthy? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another one, I am of Apollos, are you not mere men? What he saying? You're acting like normal people. You're acting like everyday people. When we, there is this 
quarreling and confusion and division among you and everybody seeing about themselves when people are more concerned about the I than the team and, and their own advancement and what makes them comfortable and what they want to the expense of the body of Christ, the unity that's in the body of Christ, Paul says, nah. No, you are still acting like how normal everyday people who don't have the spirit acting. And that is where the problem come, comes in. He says, listen, amen. He doesn't blame them for being babes. But at the same time, by now you should grow up. By now you should mature. By now I want to give you some other stuff that you are missing out on. The behavior that is showing is how we know whether people are carnal as the time wise down. Are you part of that group in the church? Come on, that is that is on quarreling and fretting and, and complaining and, and envying and jealousy. And I don't like this one. I don't deal with this one. And we have our little groups of people here. And this group think they're better than that group. And I belong to this pastor. I belong to this church. You don't know my minister, my apostle, my reverend. And Paul says, when that's happening, mm -mm, we could only take milk. We're not ready for meat. God wants to give us meat. It's time to grow up. How do we grow up? Get yourself in the word and pattern your life. Allow the word to renew your mind and see things from God's viewpoint. Adopt those principles and allow the spirit of God to bring you to a place of maturity in Christ. Amen. So we've talked about the carnal man. We've talked about the natural man. Next time we'll talk about the spiritual man. And I pray at the end of the spiritual man, it, we will see that this is where God wants all of us to be as we live and operate in the realm of the earth in these last and closing days. Amen. Of course, this is um, Living by the Word. We want to thank you for staying tuned. We encourage you to learn the Word, love the Word, live the Word. Till next time, stay strong. God bless you.